Hey guys, do you use NTLM authentication to secure your web application? Now, if you know NTLM, great. If you don't know what NTLM is, it is a Windows based authentication. All right, so this is a static page which I have hosted over this IIS web server. Now, guys, that is very simple. You just have to open the Internet Information Service Manager. Okay, and then on the site you do a right click add website and in here Okay, you provide the site name which could be anything Okay, like in my case I said it is NTLM auth and then you provide the physical path. Okay, like in our case This is where you know, I have kept this index.html page now by default when you hit the website it always reads the index page Okay, so this is how it is set up in here. Okay, once that is done, you click on OK. That's fine. Now, the next thing that you have to do is to enable Windows authentication is you select your web application and you click on this authentication. Now, when you do so, you know, by default, you always have this anonymous authentication enabled. Okay, now when you visit this website, it does not ask you to enter any credentials. Okay, and Cypress can run this page easily. Okay, let me show you. So on this page, okay, we are going to enter this data in here and we are going to check all our checkboxes. Let us look at our test case. It's very simple, guys. So we are visiting that page, okay, and we are finding those fields and doing these operations, okay. No rocket science in there. So you just save this, okay, and open the test runner. And you see the data is being entered. All right, now let's enable the Windows authentication on this application and to do so, okay, you've got to disable this anonymous authentication and you have to enable this Windows authentication. Now this Windows authentication is just a component that is already existing onto your machine. You just have to enable it. By default, it is disabled. So if you don't know how to enable this, you can easily find this out on the internet. You just have to say enable Windows authentication on IIS. Okay. All right, great. So now the Windows authentication is enabled on this particular page. Now, if I run my test case again, guys, let's see what is going to happen. Okay, so we have got 401. Let me explain this to you now. So for that, I open Firefox and in here, I just say localhost okay 9191 so guys you see we get this pop-up and we are supposed to pass in the username and password in here if we don't provide the username and password this is what we get okay same thing is happening in case of cypress as well if you could see okay unauthorized now how to fix this part for that guys we require a plugin okay so just open cypress plugins and just search for ntlm so this is the pl plugin that we have to use so open that in a separate tab okay now you have to first install it okay i have already done so it's very simple you just have to copy that command and run that in your terminal once that is done you have to open cypress support index.js okay and you have to paste this command in there great i've added that now the next thing is its usage and its usage is pretty simple straightforward guys so this is the command that we have to use so we have to provide in the host so the host in my case is the local host right because this is the url that i'm entering localhost colon 9191 so that becomes my host and guys this is an array all right so remember that this is an array now then you have to provide in the windows username and windows password okay and the other things are optional so you can leave those All right guys so let's see its usage so i go to my test case now okay i write this command now like i mentioned it is an array all right and i am saying localhost 9191 all right and then i have created this cypress.env.json file okay and in this file, I have created these two properties. And in these two properties, I am saving my username and password. All right, pretty simple. So guys, we have to make one more change. And that is in your package.json, okay, you have to say 
cypress-ntlm. Instead of cypress, this is what now you have to use and rest remain the same. So if you are running things in the headless mode, you just have to say run. If you are working with the UI, you have to say open. Okay. Now guys, let me save this. Okay. And rerun my test case. All right. So you see, we are now able to enter data into it. So guys, this plugin was really helpful in this case, isn't it? But we have to understand the way these applications are designed these days. And then we'll understand in what situation this plugin will not work. Okay, now what happens is this Windows based authentication is used for intranet applications. Okay, meaning the internal users are going to use these applications. These applications are not available to the external users. Okay, that's one part. Then these days we create separate applications for the backend and UI. Yes, so we use React.js, Vue, Angular, all right? These technologies to create the front end. And then for the back end, you have Node.js Express, Python, Django, right? Java, Spring Boot, .NET Go. So these are the different technologies using which we create the back end. Okay, so we are building an application which has got a front end and a back end written in two different technologies. So we end up kind of creating two different applications. Okay. So from the user's perspective, be it the internal user guys. So you launch the application. So you would be authenticated first for the UI and then for the backend as well. So I showed you this. Okay. So if you enable the windows authentication at both UI and at the backend, you would see this pop up twice. This is irritating, right? As a user, I don't want, I don't care, right? I just want to work on this application and it is your job to make it secure. Don't irritate me, okay? Now, there are policies in the organization that you don't even see this pop up. It's that smooth. So if you are the internal user, right, you log in, into your system and your system knows who you are you just enter in the url and let me show you like in here all right i just say localhost 9191 right i don't see that pop up all right that's cool right so we have certain policies which takes care of this part you don't have to enter the credentials all right now the point is can we reduce it to just one verification Yes, we can. How do we do that? So we say, okay, data is being fetched by the API. All right. So if we secure the API, we are good enough because UI is nothing. It's just an interface. It does not contain any data and we save data, guys. Okay. So we say, okay, what we are going to do is we are going to enable this anonymous authentication on the UI application okay and disable this windows authentication and for the backend application we are going to disable this anonymous and enable the windows authentication so when you launch the application okay you would see the initial UI okay but then that application is dependent upon the response from the API so API requires you to first authenticate, then only it is going to take your request and serve you the response. I hope that is clear. Okay. In that case, okay, guys, in that case, this plugin won't work. So we have to take a different approach in such a situation and that I'm going to cover in a separate video. So I hope you like this. Thank you so much.